ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम लालेमा अनेजा डैंग एंड विद मी इज सुभद्रा रामाचंद्रन द हेडलाइंस गवर्नमेंट अनाउंसेज कोलेट्रल फ्री लोन वर्स थ्री लाख करोड़ रूपीज बेनिफिटिंग फोर्टी फाइव लाख माइक्रो स्मॉल एंड मीडियम एंटरप्राइजेज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट कट इन टीडीएस एंड टीसीएस रेट टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च नेक्स्ट ईयर लास्ट डेट फॉर फाइलिंग ऑफ इनकम टैक्स रिटर्न एक्सटेंडेड टिल दर्टियथ ऑफ नवम्बर थ्री थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड करोड़ रूपीज एलोकेटेड फॉर माइग्रेंट वर्कर्स वेंटिलेटर्स एंड वैक्सीन डेवलपमेंट फ्रॉम पी एम केयर्स फंड कोविड नाइन्टीन रिकवरी रेट इम्प्रूव्स टू थर्टी टू पॉइंट एट टू परसेंट रेलवेज टू स्टार्ट इश्यूइंग वेट लिस्टेड टिकट्स फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ऑफ दिस मंथ फॉर स्पेशल ट्रेन्स एंड थ्री स्पेशल फ्लाइट्स टू ब्रिंग बैक अबाउट फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी स्ट्रैंडेड इंडियंस फ्रॉम गल्फ कंट्रीज अंडर वन डे भारत मिशन टूडे Government has announced the first tranche of stimulus packages under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Yojana. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had on Tuesday made a clarion call of making India self-reliant and had announced the Atmanirbhar Bharat Yojana. Addressing media persons yesterday, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman gave details regarding these financial packages equaling to 10% of the national GDP and amounting to 20 lakh crore rupees. she said the financial stimulus will cater to various sections of the society including msmes laborers middle class and industries ms sita raman announced 15 special financial packages of 6 lakh 40000 crore rupees benefiting a wide array of sectors including msmes discoms real estate middle class taxpayers and others In a historical decision the ambit of micro small and medium enterprises MSMEs has been widened resulting in inclusion of many small and micro industries under this sector this decision of changing the definition of MSMEs will increase competition and productivity in the sector in a major boost to the MSME sector collateral free loan of 3 lakh crore rupees has been announced with a moratorium of 12 months I said there are six major steps for the MSMEs. The first one, there is a collateral free automatic loan for MSMEs which is being provided. This will give facility up to 3 lakh crores, 25 crore outstanding for those MSME units for whom 25 crore is the outstanding loan or 100 crores whose turnover is will benefit from this. These loans will have a four year tenor. and there will be a moratorium given for 12 months these are going to be 100% credit guaranteed over as a cover given to banks and nbfcs on principal and interest so this is going to be available till 31st october 2020 there are no guarantee fees no fresh collaterals required This decision will increase cash flow of over 50000 crore rupees benefiting common people. The date for filing income tax return for the last financial year has also been extended till 30th November, while last date for filing tax audits has been extended from 30th September to 31st October. Finance minister also announced reduction of statutory provident fund contribution by both employers and employees to 10% of basic wages from the existing 12% for the next 3 months. The decision has been taken to facilitate more take home salary for employees and give relief to employers in payment of PF dues resulting in a liquidity ease of 6750 crore rupees. The decision will be applicable on all the establishments covered under the Employees Provident Fund Organisation (EPFO). Besides, Ms. Sita Raman also announced the extension of another scheme under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Package (PMGKP) for three months till August this year. Under it, the government would contribute entire 24% of PF contributions till August. under the pmgkp payment of 12% of employer and 12% employee contributions were made into epf accounts the total benefits accrued is about 2500 crore rupees to 72.22 lakh employees liquidity relief of 2500 crores to 72.22 lakh employees 
is now being proposed to be provided by extending this contribution for the next three months also. June, July and August 2020, the EPF contribution will be paid by Government of India. May Sita Raman announced a sum of 30,000 crore rupees for non-banking financial companies, housing finance companies, HFCs and microfinance institutions under a special liquidity scheme. Further, 45,000 crore rupees partial credit guarantee scheme 2.0 was also unveiled for NBFCs, HFCs and MFIs with low credit rating to help them extend loans to individuals and MSMEs. Government of India now launches a 30,000 crore special liquidity scheme. Under the scheme, investment will be made in both primary and secondary market transactions where investment grade debt papers, this is not infusing equity, this is taking and buying debt papers of NBFCs, housing finance corporations and microfinance institutions and not high quality debt papers, they can be investment quality also. Providing relief to the construction companies, central agencies like Railways, Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways and Central Public Works have been asked to grant an extension of six months for completion of work covering construction and other related contracts. In a relief to real estate developers, Finance Minister also informed that the deadline for completion of projects will be extended by up to six months, treating it treating the coronavirus outbreak as an event of force measure under the reality law RERA. She informed that Urban Development Ministry will issue advisory to all the states and union territories to treat COVID-19 period event as force measure. The move will benefit real estate sector and agencies which have been entrusted to complete civil work. In a relief to power distribution companies, a liquidity flow of 90,000 crore rupees to the PFCs and RECs have been announced. Discoms today are facing unprecedented cash flow problems. They desperately need help. Otherwise, they are unable to pay power generating companies. All the states, Discoms are in serious crisis. So in order to help them, there is a liquidity, emergency liquidity injection which is happening to the extent of 90,000 crores. Now the Power Finance Corporation, REC, the Rural Electrification Corporations, both of them put together will infuse liquidity of 90,000 crores. Vivad Se Vishwas scheme has also been extended up to 31st December without obligation of any extra payment. Finance Minister said that the economic package of 20 lakh crore rupees announced by the Prime Minister will enhance growth and build a very self-reliant India, Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Speaking exclusively to AIR News, Vice Chairman Niti Aayog, Rajiv Kumar termed government's impetus to MSME sector as historic and said the Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan will lay a strong foundation for edifice of self-reliance in the country. So this has been an outstanding package, which is just the right follow-up uh, to the Prime Minister's speech where he had promised uh, an unprecedented uh, stimulus uh, for the Indian economy. Finance Minister Sitaraman has just chosen to give this out in different tranches, the first of which was announced. And focus there has clearly been to enable our small and medium enterprises to get over this crisis and not let the cash crunch convert itself into insolvency and bankruptcy, uh, for which uh, some major steps have been taken, and including a 3 lakh crore collateral free debt, a 30,000 crore pretty infusion. Prime Minister, Citizen Assistance and Relief in Emergency Situations Fund Trust today decided to allocate 3,100 crore rupees for fight against COVID-19. Out of this amount, a sum of around 2,000 crore rupees will be earmarked for the purchase of ventilators, 1,000 crore will be used for care of migrant laborers and 100 crore rupees will be given to support vaccine development. The trust formed on 27th March this year is headed by Prime Minister and other ex-official members of the trust are Defence Minister, Home Minister and Finance Minister. More from our correspondent. 
For augmenting the infrastructure to tackle COVID-19 cases across the country, 50,000 made in India ventilators will be purchased from PM Cares Fund. These ventilators will be provided to government-run COVID hospitals in all states and UTs for better treatment of the critical COVID-19 cases. For strengthening the existing measures being taken for the welfare of migrants and poor, the state will be given a lump sum assistance of total 1,000 crore rupees from PM Cares Fund. This amount would be provided to the state government to place it at the disposal of district collectors, municipal commissioners for strengthening their efforts in providing accommodation facilities, making food arrangements, providing medical treatment and making transportation arrangements of the migrants. Indian academia, startups and industry have come together in cutting-edge vaccine design and development to support the COVID-19 vaccine designers and developers. An amount of 100 crore rupees will be given from PM Cares Fund as a helping hand to catalyze vaccine development which will be utilized under the supervision of principal scientific advisor Anupam Mish, AR News, Delhi. Agriculture Ministry has said that an amount of 18,517 crore rupees has been released under PM Kisan during the lockdown period and nearly 9.25 crore families have benefited. The ministry said in Rabi marketing season 2020-21, a total of over 277.38 lakh metric tons of wheat has arrived in Food Corporation of India, out of which around 269 lakh metric tons was purchased. It also said in Rabi season 2020-21, a total of 3,208 designated procurement centers for Rabi pulses and oil seeds are available in 11 states. It also said 3.17 lakh metric tons gram has been procured from nine states, 3.67 lakh metric tons mustard from five states, and 1.86 lakh metric tons of tour from eight states. You are listening to the Morning News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Government announces collateral free loan worth 3 lakh crore rupees, benefiting 45 lakh micro, small and medium enterprises. 25% cut in TDS and TCS rates till 31st of March next year. Last date for filing of income tax return extended till 30th November. 3,100 crore rupees allocated for migrant workers, ventilators and vaccine development from PM Cares Fund. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 32.82%. Railways to start issuing waitlisted tickets from 22nd of this month for special trains and Three special flights to bring back about 550 stranded Indians from Gulf countries under Vande Bharat mission today. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan held a high-level meeting with Health Minister of Punjab, Balbir Singh Sidhu, to review the preparedness and containment measures taken for COVID-19 management in the state through video conference. During the meeting, Dr. Vardhan stated that a total of 74,281 cases have been reported from the country in which 24,386 persons have been cured and 2,415 deaths had occurred. He said the doubling time of cases in the past 14 days was 11 and it has now improved to 12.6 in the last three days. He added that the fatality rate is 3.2% and the recovery rate is pegged at 32.8%. The Union Health Minister also informed that as of now, 900 dedicated COVID hospitals with around 1.80 lakh beds and 2,040 dedicated COVID health centers with over 1.29 lakh beds and 8,708 quarantine centers and 5,577 COVID care centers are now available to combat COVID-19 in the country. Ministry of Railways has decided to start issuing of waitlisted tickets from the 22nd of May for journeys not only on its presently operational special trains as well as in those to be notified in due course of time. As per the Railway Board order, there will be a cap on the waitlisted ticket in these trains. The Railways has capped waiting list ticket limit up to 100 for AC3 tier, 50 for AC2 tier, 100 for chair cars, 20 each for first AC and executive class and 200 for sleeper class. 
The changes will come into effect for tickets booked from May 15 for journeys beginning from the 22nd of this month. Since the reservation period for special trains has been kept at a maximum of seven days, travellers will be able to book waiting list tickets from May 15. However, there will be no RAC tickets on these trains. Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, DMRC, is working out a detailed cleaning and maintenance work of Delhi Metro in view of the pandemic. The exhaustive exercise includes sanitization of 264 stations, over 2,200 coaches, 1,100 escalators and 1,000 lifts. DMRC is finalizing the protocols for social distancing to be followed while this exercise is on. Delhi Metro has, however, informed that the date for resumption of services has not been finalized yet and it will be notified at a later stage. It further clarified that all systems of the Metro, including signaling, electrical work, rolling stock, tracks, among others, have to be tested in detail before services commence. Day 8 of the Vande Bharat mission will see one flight from Jeddah to Kochi and two flights from Dubai to Bhuvneshwar and New Delhi. Nearly 550 passengers are expected to fly back today from Jeddah and Dubai. The flight from Dubai to Bhuvneshwar will be the first flight to Odisha under the Vande Bharat mission. Priority for repatriation is being given to workers in distress, elderly people, urgent medical cases, pregnant women and others stranded in difficult situation. Only those who are found asymptomatic will be allowed to board the flight. Nancy, a stranded student, got stuck in transit in Dubai while flying from the United States. She is now one of the passengers returning home on board Dubai to Delhi Vande Bharat flight. She has thanked the government for this initiative. My name is Nancy and I'm a student in LA and I got stranded here. Like, I was flying via Dubai and I got stranded in Dubai for two months. I'm very thankful for this Vande Bharat mission that is taking you back to our home. Under Vande Bharat mission, two evacuation flights, namely from UK and Kuwait, carrying over 500 stranded Indians, arrived at Ahmedabad airport at midnight. Our correspondent reports that a batch of 177 stranded Indians returned to the city late evening yesterday from Kuwait. Similarly, a total of 327 Indians from UK also arrived at Ahmedabad in the wee hours today. So far, four flights have arrived in the city carrying around 750 stranded people. Meanwhile, the number of COVID-19 cases in the state rose to 9,268 with 364 new patients reported yesterday, while the death toll of COVID-19 patients went up to 566 with the death of another 29 patients. Here's a report. As many as 316 patients were discharged from the hospitals yesterday, taking the total number of persons recovered from COVID-19 in the state to 3,562. Ahmedabad reported the highest 292 cases yesterday. Amreli district, which was in the green zone till now, reported its first case yesterday. A 67-year-old woman who had arrived from Surat was tested positive in Amreli district yesterday. With this, COVID-19 entered in all the 33 districts of the state. Meanwhile, the government has formed an export committee to recommend the economic revival measures post-lockdown, which will be headed by former Finance Secretary of Government of India, Hasmukh Arya. The committee will submit its final report within one month. Aparna Khund, Air News, Ahmedabad. Uttar Pradesh government has decided to give 50% subsidy on PPE kits to those nursing homes and registered hospitals who will provide treatment to the patients on the rates decided under Ayushman Bharat scheme. Government will also extend the registration for six months of those hospitals who are registered under Ayushman Bharat. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has said that the fight against COVID-19 can easily be won with the help of private doctors. Meanwhile, coronavirus has now spread to all 75 districts of the state, though the number of cases and mortality rates remain low. A report. All 75 districts in the state are now corona infected as one positive case was found in Chandauli district. It was the only district left where no cases were found till date. Now there are 1744 active cases in 69 districts. Total 4 deaths were reported from the state due to COVID in last 24 hours, taking the toll to 86. One resident of Ayodhya district died on board in Shramik special train at Unnao district and during postmortem in King George Medical University Lucknow, it was found that he was corona positive. 
positive. Following the incident, the whole staff involved in post-mortem has been quarantined and post-mortem house is now closed for sanitization work. Meanwhile, officials in Kanpur, Agra and Meerut districts have been asked to enforce lockdown strictly since number of COVID-19 patients are still high in these districts. Social Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the Industries and Commerce Department, is Kashmir Division, is gradually resuming its industrial activities in areas which are not designated as red zones. Priority has been given to restart units manufacturing essential commodities and medical supplies. At present, there are 31 coal stores in Kashmir holding about 25,000 metric tons of apple, which would be gradually exported to fruit markets till the middle of June this year. The efforts are aimed to give some impetus to the economy by resuming industrial and manufacturing activities in Kashmir. A report. With government relaxing lockdown measures to permit gradual resumption of activity in certain sectors, Industries and Commerce Department in Kashmir has restored industrial activity and more importantly, the fruit that was lying in cold stores. Consequently, about 1,450 fruit trucks have left from cold stores to Delhi and other terminal markets from Kashmir. Regulating the supplies of the fruit produce to terminal markets is bound to fetch remunerative prices for the dealers as there were concerns that due to extended lockdown, the apples may be sold locally at through prices. This is Sunil Kohl for AR News from Shirinagar. The total COVID-19 infected cases in Tamil Nadu surged past the 9,000 mark yesterday with the confirmation of 509 new cases. They include five of the evacuees who reached Chennai from abroad. However, active cases remain less than 7,000. 42 people were discharged yesterday. Three others succumbed to the disease, all from Chennai with comorbidity like diabetes or hypertension. The total death toll so far due to the disease in the, in the state is 64. Meanwhile, evacuation of passengers from abroad under the Vande Bharat mission is going ahead. Here's more from our correspondent. As part of the first phase of the Vande Bharat mission, a flight from Chicago brought 142 stranded Indians to Chennai yesterday, including an infant and 62 women. Two more flights are awaited from Dhaka and Manila today, with a total of 425 passengers on board, while another flight from Chennai is being operated to Dhaka with 170 people. On Friday, the last day of the first phase of the Vande Bharat evacuation mission, another flight is awaited from London. Meanwhile, various political leaders in Tamil Nadu have expressed concern that the state is missing in the second phase of the Vande Bharat mission. They say there are still thousands of people from the state who are desperate to return from several other countries. Jay Singh, AR News, Chennai. In our series, Experts Speak on All India Radio, we bring you the views of the leading medical experts on COVID-19. Dr. Sanjay Pandey of GB Pant Hospital, Delhi, said that the symptoms of the coronavirus are upper respiratory tract infection, sneezing and cough. इसमें कुछ भी करने की आवश्यकता नहीं है अगर मान लीजिए कि आपके पास बैठा हुआ व्यक्ति संक्रमित भी है तो सरकार ने जैसा बार-बार कहा है कि आप सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग मेंटेन करिए आप मास्क का प्रयोग करिए आप बार-बार साफ सफाई का ध्यान रखें हाथ को धोएं अगर सैनिटाइजर नहीं है तो साबुन से हाथ धोएं तो अगर आप साफ सफाई रखते हैं सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग मेंटेन करते हैं तो अगर आपके आसपास कोई कोरोना संक्रमित मरीज भी है और उसमें कोई सिम्टम नहीं है तो उससे उसके प्रसार की संभावनाएं काफी कम हो जाती है Dr. Nand Kumar, Professor of Psychiatry, Ames, suggested the people to stay at home, spend time with family members and practice yoga. We are going to overcome this crisis within a few weeks. In the coming few weeks, stay at home, spend time with the family, do household work, exercise, listen to music, sing with the family, do yoga, meditation and take care of emotional needs of the family and yourself. Indian cricketer Virendra Sehwag appealed to the people to follow all government guidelines and directives on lockdown to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. अरे हम घर से बाहर नहीं निकल पा रहे हैं, morning walk के लिए नहीं जा पा रहे हैं, mall में shopping नहीं कर पा रहे हैं, ये तकलीफ है आपकी। अगर इसे आप तकलीफ समझते हैं, तो तकलीफ आपने देखी नहीं है। Doctors, health workers, municipal workers, police अपनी जान की परवाह ना करते हुए हम सब की सेवा में लगे हुए हैं। इन वॉरियर्स ने एक तरह से अपना जीवन ही दांव पर लगा दिया है मेरा आपसे केवल एक ही अनुरोध है कि जो भी स्टेट गवर्नमेंट या सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट कहती है उसका अच्छे से पालन करें आप सेफ तो भारत सेफ हम सबको मिलकर कोरोना को हराना है 
Now, let's take a look at the weather forecast for today. In the national capital, minimum temperature will be 25 degrees Celsius, while maximum temperature is expected to be around 38. Delhi is likely to witness a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Mumbai will experience a mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards the evening. The minimum temperature in the city is likely to be 27 degrees Celsius, while maximum will remain around 34 degrees Celsius. In the south, Chennai will see a generally cloudy sky with the temperatures hovering between 27 and 37 degrees Celsius. In the east, Kolkata will witness a partly cloudy sky with the possibility of moderate thunderstorm. The minimum temperature in the metropolis will be 27 degrees Celsius while maximum will be 37. On to north, in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature today will be 22 degrees Celsius in Jammu, while maximum will be around 34 degrees Celsius. The city will experience a partly cloudy sky with the possibility of rain, thunderstorm or dust storm. In Srinagar, the minimum temperature will be 13 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be 20. The region is likely to experience thunderstorms with rain. Similar weather is expected to prevail in Gilgit and Muzaffarabad. In Gilgit, the temperatures will hover between 15 and 24 degrees Celsius today. Muzaffarabad will witness minimum temperature around 21 degrees Celsius and maximum temperature will be nearly 25. The new services division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone-in program today will bring you a special discussion program on COVID-19. Listeners can ask questions to the experts on toll-free number 1-800-115767. You may also ask questions on telephone number 011-2331-4444 and post queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by Hashtag Ask AIR. This can be heard tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.25 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.com and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You can also follow us on the News on AIR app for updates. In the first sign of opening up of the sky routes, Dubai's national carrier Emirates Airlines has announced its plan to operate scheduled flight services from the 21st of May to nine destinations, London, Frankfurt, Paris, Milan, Madrid, Chicago, Toronto, Sydney and Melbourne. Emirates will also offer connections in Dubai for customers travelling between the UK and Australia. And now an overview of today's newspapers. First dose is liquidity. MSMEs get mega guarantee headlines at Indian Express citing COVID economic package day one. MSMEs get a 3 lakh crore lifeline is the economic times headline day one. Sita Raman unveils loan guarantees liquidity infusion. CAPF canteens to go Indian from June, says Hindustan Times. Canteens of the Central Armed Forces Police will sell only indigenous products in order to make India self-reliant in view of challenges posed by COVID-19. The Hindustan Times that India will be recruiting 1,500 patients in about 30 hospitals for WHO's Global Solidarity Trials for treatment of COVID-19. Haryana police personnel will now get some relief with the approval of weekly off on rotation basis reports the Tribune. Asian Age Court Chief Justice of Indian S.A. Bobre as saying that Supreme Court judges and lawyers should not wear black coat and gown for now in courts as it is easier to catch and spread virus. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Government announces collateral free loan worth 3 lakh crore rupees benefiting 45 lakh micro, small and medium enterprises. 25% cut in TDS and TCS rates till 31st of March next year. Last date for filing of income tax return extended till 30th November. 3,100 crore rupees allocated for migrant workers, ventilators and vaccine development from PM Cares Fund. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 32.82%. Railways to start issuing waitlisted tickets from 22nd of this month for special trains. And three special flights to bring back about 550 stranded Indians from Gulf countries under the Vande Bharat mission today. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.